I thoroughly enjoyed the Hunger Games books when I read them back in the day, and I mostly love the movies. It's a really solid series that I kind of forgot about over time, just because of time. I never got around to reading the book of this, the prequel of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, so when the adaptation was announced, I was looking forward to going in blind. I didn't even know it was about President Snow until like a day before I watched it. I didn't have any expectations, and I am impressed. <laughs> The way the film plays with expectations and consequences, just like the series does as a whole, immediately captivated me. To know where President Snow's shockingly humble beginnings originated, how the Hunger Games began, and the why of all of it really sells the depravity and disparity of this world. It's utterly horrific, but never anything but compelling. Twists weave in and out of the story, and despite knowing Snow eventually becomes the villain of the story, I was not quite sure how it would all end. It is his villain origin story, and it's clever at playing subtle throughout the majority of the somewhat bloated runtime. Because ultimately that ties into my largest complaint, which is that this is quite clearly two films worth of material crammed into one. They do attempt to go the route of Zack Snyder's Justice League and split it into parts, but it never quite works out as well there. It doesn't ruin the movie by any stretch, but the first 90 minutes culminate in what feels like this big, exciting, compelling Hunger Games blockbuster, while the last hour tries to be the slow burn, subtle buildup, and it leads to some pacing issues, and just comes out feeling uneven. I remember thinking the film was almost over, yet there was still that aforementioned final hour. I know it's one book, and splitting books up into two films doesn't always go over very well, but that probably should have happened here with precedent in the film series already, and the fact that the nature of the story, the structure of it, really lends itself to that format. I don't really understand that creative approach, because better yet, in the day we live in, this would have been proposed better as a six to eight episode miniseries for one of the several streaming services and everything would have had more time to breathe. Snow's descent into madness and evil could have felt more palpable and the ending not quite as rushed as it comes off. Side characters get more time to develop and the romance at the center of it all, really being the crux, becomes much more believable. And therein lies another issue that has sat with me since watching. The performances are great. Tom Blythe, or Bliss, is believable and sometimes it makes you root for him despite him playing it straight as an eventual scumbag. Rachel Zegler is extremely charismatic as Lucy Gray, and together they are just fine. They do their best, but the chemistry doesn't seem there because there's no time to really invest in this relationship, as the plot has to keep moving so fast. Sadly, it does come off as a fast, unbelievably staged relationship informed by trauma. The acting is great, and I don't blame the actors or even the writing, but the structure of the story and the editing within the film not leaving any wiggle room, yet also being bloated for one story. It needed much more time to be fleshed out, to feel, to really pull us in. And while Francis Lawrence directs this well, as he did several others in the series, I would say that none of the action is particularly memorable, and yet it's staged competently. There's exciting scenes in this. Where he shines is letting the camera with an extremely claustrophobic shallow depth of field communicate the character's internal struggles. It's beautiful and again subtle and the slow burn nature of it really pays off at the end despite my issues and I had no idea what was going to happen and I was on the edge of my seat almost the entire runtime. It asks some big questions and it doesn't clearly answer any of them and leaves it up to the audience and I really respect that. And I know it's going to sound like I'm bagging on this way too much, but I've never been a huge fan of the designs of the characters from Pan Am, as it just comes across goofy in such a sad future, almost like there's a tonal imbalance there. Maybe that's intentional, as it's supposed to represent the dichotomy between the classes, but it can be distracting, and none of this has felt more than with Viola Davis's costume design. It's not as bad with the students, but I found her often distracting from her otherwise fantastic performance. And maybe it's just a taste thing, and I get why it's there for the nation and what it says, but it's just not really my jam. Sliding back into the pod, Positives, where the film is brave is how it doesn't commit to conclusions, only consequences. The moral footing is as strong as ever, until it isn't. The audience left appalled by character actions, yet somehow, deep down, understanding them. Leaving some big implications on the nature of the Hunger Games themselves, which I found immensely satisfying. They don't tie it in a bow, things are left ambiguous, and I think that's rare in something like this nowadays in a blockbuster picture. And while I have some serious problems, I am so pleased and surprised by how good it was overall because I didn't expect it. The story is interesting, compelling, and full of the best kind of shocking moments and insightful commentary. I'm glad I stayed away from the trailer so I could just go in blind. I'm doing that more and more nowadays because this is one of the better big budget films of the year and left me wanting more from this world in the best of ways, making me seriously consider binging the original story all over again with the new insight into so much backstory, especially on President Snow. I feel like all of his scenes will have so much more weight to them, but it should have just been a miniseries or at least a two-parter, which you may realize 
can be a common nitpick from me, especially when we're talking about adaptations or adaptions. Technically both are correct. I give The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, four out of five stars. That is quite a long title to say. <laughs> if you like what you're hearing, consider subscribing, hit like, and remember, always look for the good.